All right, guys, welcome to another GPU showdown. I really was not expecting to do another one of these so quickly after we did the 480 versus the 1061 yesterday on AMD Ryzen, but someone reached out to me over on Twitter very early this morning saying, hey, would you do a comparison between the 980 Ti and the 1080 Ti? And I thought that that would be a great idea so that we can get an idea of the performance gains that we saw in just a single generation between these two cards. The 980 Ti just came out not not all that long ago, June 2nd, 2015, so not even two years ago, and the 1080 Ti just came out a couple weeks ago on March 10th, 2017. And it also did launch at a little bit higher of a price, actually. The 1080 Ti came out at $699, while the 980 Ti, when that launched, was $650. And when it came out, it was an absolute monster. It was just a slightly cut-down version of the Titan X at that time, while the 1080 Ti is really trading blows with the new, the newer Titan X and actually even beating it in some ways, having that little bit faster DDR5X memory, which Micron has had some more time to refine over the last year since the launch of the GTX 1080 in 2016. So we're going to be looking at these two cards. You'll be seeing some side-by-sides here, and we will go through all the averages and the minimums at 1080p, 1440p, as well as 4K, so we can see what the gains really are. As far as other pertinent information you need to know before we get into those numbers, I am running on my i7 6800K build along with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, which is clocked at 2666 megahertz. And I am on the latest Nvidia driver for both cards, which is 37.92. As mentioned, I tested both of these cards at stock settings, so no additional overclock was put onto these reference GPUs, so it really is just an apples to apples comparison of reference cards directly from NVIDIA with no factory overclock or any manual tweaking done by me of any kind. I do use the prefer maximum performance thing in the NVIDIA control panel and disable VSync, but that's really the only options I ever go in there and adjust for when I'm doing GPU testing. I think it's important to put the power on maximum performance for any GPU testing for sure. So I always do that in the NVIDIA control panel, but nothing else was, was tweaked here. These are just reference or founder's edition cards, however you want to call them compared to each other. So let's go ahead and jump into those numbers now, and we will start off with the 1080p averages, where we could see the 1080 Ti just putting up some monstrous numbers, actually seeing gains here. In actually, at all resolutions, we saw gains of anywhere from 40 to as high as over 80% gains going between the two in averages and minimums. We can see here um, that obviously the 980 Ti is still a very capable 1080p card. The only exception here really being Ghost Recon Wildlands where that did fall behind at an average of 44 FPS. That game is absolutely brutal. Even the 1080 Ti was only able to pull in an average of 69 FPS. Watch Dogs 2 was another one where it did fall behind 60 FPS and the average is getting 58 on the 980 Ti, but all the other titles here, it was able to get an average of 60 FPS. So if you're still out there with a 980 Ti and you're gaming at 1080p, there probably isn't much reason to upgrade. But if you're are if you're looking to do an upgrade bundled with a monitor upgrade, which is what I usually like to do, I kind of I'll, I'll usually wait till I buy a new monitor to go out and necessarily buy a, you know a new graphics card so I can kind of push that. Um, but yeah, the, so if you're still oh, hit my desk there, so if you're still gaming at 1080p, the 980 Ti is going to be just fine. Here's a look at the minimums now here. We could see um, that the 980 Ti did end up going below 60 in a couple of these titles here. Watch Dogs 2, uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands of the Division, and The Witcher 3 went below 60 on the minimums on all of those while the GTX 1080 Ti was able to stay above 60 on every single game that we tested here. Let's go ahead and bump it on up to 1440p now, which is probably a more reasonable resolution that someone would go out and pick up a 1080 Ti for. So we could see here that the 1080 Ti is absolutely crushing it in these games. The only one it fell behind on at 60 FPS on is Ghost Recon Wildlands. But you could play that game with just a couple of options tweaked and you would definitely be getting over 60 FPS average in that particular title. While the GTX 980 Ti did fall behind in a number of newer games here, uh, Watch Witcher 3, Watch Dogs 2, Ghost Recon, The Division, um, Mass Effect Andromeda, it ended up falling behind its 60 FPS in the averages in all of these games. So if you've been hanging on to that 980 Ti, chances are by now you've already had to lower graphics options in some games in order to be able to run these games at the solid 60 if that's important to you. It's not for everyone. Some people are okay with drops into the 40s. Me personally, I need to have my games 
at 60 FPS or above. Just running these tests, I can tell you for me, in certain games like trying to aim and like in Sniper Elite 4, at like 4K on a 980 Ti when I was getting like in the 30 FPS was very difficult and even just under 60 FPS for me is a little bit harder to aim. I really need that fluidity above 60 FPS in any type of shooter game. So and I'm and I'm sure there are many of you out there that feel kind of the same way. Let's go into the minimums now here at 1440p. We can see that the 1080 Ti staying up above 60 FPS here in the majority of the games, but falling behind in a few. Once again, Watch Dogs 2, Ghost Recon, and The Division. That seems to be pretty much consistent across all of our testing here is that those titles seem to be some of the more demanding of all of them, but consistently you can also see that the gains are huge going from 980 Ti to the 1080 Ti, 40 to upwards of 80% at times. Going into 4K now, we can see the real strength of the 1080 Ti, I think here, you know, able to really power 4K games, though not perfectly. Many of these games falling down below 60 FPS, Mass Effect Andromeda, even Rainbow Six Siege, which is a very well optimized title that was not able to maintain the average of 60 FPS at 4K. And that's really going to be one of the selling points for a lot of people is if they want to do 4K, the 1080 Ti is probably going to be your best bet. While the 980 Ti is, I, I would say it is really not a 4K graphics card, at least for for newer games, you would definitely need to look at doing SLI or something like that if you're wanting to run a nine if running to run 980 Ti's. If you already own one, you might be able to get a second one. But at that point, I would really advise you to just just sell it, take your losses, and go out and get a 1080 Ti for 4K. As you can see here in the minimums, the 980 Ti is just really not doing very well at all. Many of these in some of these games here, like Mass Effect, The Division, Ghost Recon, Watch Dogs, falling down to 20 FPS or below. On the minimum so really really low making these titles what I would consider to be utterly unplayable at 4k and you would definitely want to lower down options if you were playing with that graphics card or look at upgrading some point in the near future so hopefully these uh, graphs kind of gave you guys some good information out there if you're already running a 980 Ti and looking to pick up a newer graphics card if you've been struggling on some of these games hopefully this uh, answered the question for some of you but I'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here, guys. Please let me know your thoughts, as always, on all of the numbers that we saw down in the comments below. I'll see you guys down there for discussion, and don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe if you're not already. But I'll catch you guys next time. Turn.